All right, we're live. Hey. All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Hello, all. Judy's here. Judy, how are you? So glad to have this time with you and your awesome community. It's so much fun to do these conversations, and I love hearing the news. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Um, let's make sure everyone can hear us. Can you hear us? I know there's a lag, a couple seconds lag, but if you can hear us, give us a thumbs up, wave your hands, let us know that you can hear us, please. I see my face on the screen. Hi all, hello. I see Maria, Mr. Chill and Nikki. Hey Yolanda, welcome. All right, are we here? Are we in the right place? Hey, Yolanda. Good to see you again. All right. Yolanda can hear. Mr. Chill can hear. Eddie, Eddie welcome back. Hear. All right. All right. Nikki says, ready for some truth nuggets from Judy. She brings it every time. Uh, thanks, Guy. You, you bring <laughs> it out of me. You ask great questions and your community challenges me. So it's uh, a really great back and forth. I just love it. I, in fact, I told Judy today to put the smack down on you guys. I said, be, don't be easy on them. I All told right. her, do not be easy on them today. Make them do some challenging activities, some work. Okay, All right. We will. So get your, get out a piece of paper and something to write with. And we're going to do a little bit of, a little bit of drawing today. Cause we're going to be talking about the idea that the business that you want could be as close as the palm of your hand. Nice, nice, nice. And before we do that, grab your papers, grab your pens. I have mine. I'm taking my notes. Look at that. Okay. So I have my stuff on the screen. I'm ready to go. My notes, my date, blank page. I'm ready for Judy today. Okay. I'm taking notes as well. I'm a student. We're never, listen, it's, you're never too old to learn. You never have too much information. Um, we're always, 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 always have an open mind. And again, they say that first you're a student. And so I'm a student today, Judy. Can I be your student? I would be honored. The, Thank you. Um, you sort of, there's a whole thing about the, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I think it's uh, also the true, the other way around when the teacher is ready, the student appears. So nice. I'm so glad to be here with everyone today. I love it. I love it. I love it. And while we're waiting for some more people to come on board, mm -hmm. just again, for everyone out there, I always say, use this like a conference. All right. There's 30 people here on the room so far. We're probably going to get up to around hundred people in a few minutes. So definitely let us know. Again, we see your names on here, but tell us your industry and yeah. the city and state where you're from. And Is use it like a private tutorial. We've got people who have come back again. This is our fourth session together. And so, you know, there were always some questions that we didn't quite get to. So if you've got something that's on your mind today about how you track down the leads, where business comes from, that's what I'm all about. So, so yeah, tell us about it. the topic. Tell us again, what does that topic mean? Sure. Five federal lead sources you need to know starts with thinking about the idea. What is a lead? Eric, you're a savvy multi-million dollar successful business owner. What do you think of when you think of a lead in business terms? How do you define a lead in business terms? Oh, when I, when I define a lead, um, what is it? It's something that is taking me one step closer to closing a deal. Okay. So I, I, I'll, you said that I, we should challenge our folks here today. So if you're here and you're listening, let's drop it in the chat. What does a business lead mean? How would you define a business lead? Let's see in the chat what you've got. Cause I've got a really specific idea in mind, but I'm always curious. When you think about it, what's okay, a business okay. lead? Hey, by the way, I, I only see Nikki is the only person that followed instructions and put her information in there. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> uh, where's, I see Trish is on here. I see Eddie's on here. Maria's on here. Okay. Mr. Chill's on here. Yolanda's on here. We're, we're, listen, 
Who's following instructions? Excellent. There you go. All right. Let's follow some instructions. And all right. Quest Power. Quest Power. Great. Industries Logistics. All right. What else? Who else is in here? Mm -hmm. Tony, listen, before you ask for Nikki's information, you got to tell us who you are and what you do. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a dating channel. Right? Come on, Tony. <laughs> Come on, guys. Tell it. Listen, we want to know about your business, who you are. There's Maria, the do. lead, someone or something that has an opportunity to grow your business. You know, All right. Maria, I like that very much. So let's start here. because Maria, did you Google that with your big old tree? <laughs> I'll take that. Research is good. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't ask you had to make it up out of your head. So that's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. So a lead, I think of, think of a lead in terms of detective stories. All right. So if you're listening, you're online with us, just drop in the chat the name of one of your favorite detectives, your, whether it's a television, current television series, or it's uh, Lupin, or Hercule Poirot, or Columbo. Who's your favorite detective, real or historical? Do you have one? Ooh, Eric? Detectives. Detectives or detective series. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? I did love? used to watch a show with a detective on it. Mm -hmm. um, um, Matlock. Matlock. Great. <laughs> Olivia from Law and Order. Thank you very much. Exactly. Now, okay. For many years, I would watch NCIS. Lots of fun. Yep. Uh, Pink yep. Panther. Yep. Yeah, why not? Inspector Pink, who said Pink Stone. Panther? I don't see that in here. Wow. Sigma White and Blue. Yes. All Magnum, right, there we go. Magnum okay. PI All right. Pink or, Panther. or depending Magnum on whether PI it's is old good Magnum one. or new Magnum, you've got the whole ensemble cast of Blue Bloods. Here's why that matters to all of us. Whether the detectives are putting their heads together in the bar room, the squad room, the bedroom, they're trying to put together what they talk about as leads there. They're trying to piece together what was the story in espionage terms. You hear human intelligence, electronic intelligence, signals intelligence, and human intelligence is very much a part of what we're collecting as business owners, when we're trying to piece together stories of who's our buyer and where is that opportunity? In my books, a lead in business terms is someone whose position, an activity, opens the possibility, provides you with some kind of intelligence or information that can lead to opportunity. And so a lead is not something that gets pumped out of GovWin or something that is a, a line item in a forecast. Mm. A lead is a human being, really important. And so start there. So we're going to talk about five federal lead sources you need to know. And because as your community, I'm going to give you one big bonus one. All but right. The short That's... answer is to start where you are. Did you know about the 12X rule, Eric? No, what's the 12X rule? The 12X rule is this. Someone who has already paid you money is 12 times more likely to do that again, mm. be a purchase for you than somebody who's never heard of you. Okay. So your best leads are the people who already know you, like you, trust you, and have paid you money. These are the people who pay you on time, come back for more, Okay. send their friends. Mm -hmm. They know when your birthday is. Your picture is on their refrigerator. Though that's your, that's your A list of current clients, right? Right. Right. And so easiest lead is follow-up conversations, just like the one you were telling me about when we were getting things set up. You just actually managed to get some really up close and personal time with your client by getting him the heck out of town where right. he couldn't be interrupted. Right. Not everybody can or needs to do that. But I would bet that lots of people don't spend as much time as we would like to 
with our cherished clients, the people that we know we like, we've enjoyed working with them. And it's been a while because we've been so busy out and about and developing other business. The first lead source you can tap are the people who are your current clients. What kind of regular touch, regular nurture, regular contact, what kinds of things have you learned, Eric, to stay in touch with, say, the the 20% of your clients who represent the 80% of your referral and return business? You know, that's actually a good question, Judy, because I I think that I've done um, a poor job at that before in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, with the federal agencies, I've done a better job because, you know, when we're on projects, I kind of always stop by and say hi and give them progress updates on what we're doing. So I'll pop in the office and let them know I'm on site today, things like that. I'll just stop in and say, hey, our guys are out there working, you know, just saying quick hi, and then I'll leave. Mm-hmm. That's what I that's what I, that I do uh, mm-hmm. for the federal clients, because I'm really, that's an area where I'm not sure what you can and can't do with the government oh. agencies. Okay. That's a great conversation to have. It is a great conversation to have. I'm sure a lot have. of probably feel have the same concerns and fears. There are. And here's a couple of things. And, you know, it's really true that sometimes our federal buyers are just as afraid of us as we are of them. Mm. I will say that bookmark or jot down a note to take a skim through Federal Acquisition Regulation Part 3 on okay. ethics. Part FAR okay. Part 3 is where you'll find the details and what you can and can't give to a federal buyer. And that would be a great topic to come back and talk about maybe a little closer to Thanksgiving. I'm on my favorite times to talk about gift giving to your federal buyers. There are so many things you can give your current clients to show appreciation. And these things don't cost a cent and are completely within the bounds of FAR Part 3 and will leave you unforgettable and top of mind. So there, a conversation for another day. Okay, okay. And so your current clients are a great source of business leads. You already know them, you know what they like. So the first source of a lead is to go back and not only say, hi, I'm in the neighborhood, but sit and think for a minute. What do you have to pick up a conversation with that individual person? What's going on in their life right now? Have they got a vaccine? Are they thinking of not getting a vaccine? Do they have kids somewhere else? Do they have parents out of town? How's everybody doing? Easy conversations to just reconnect with people, show them you've been thinking of and that you care about them. And so you want to be thinking about what does a win look like for your current client? Where else might they need or want to go with their program and also with their professional career? Come bringing things for them. Show them that you care about them. There might be an article, an invitation to a webinar. You might be hosting something. Mm. And so there might be a link to a report, maybe an industry survey or something exciting that's coming up. Share those things with them. Give them things that they can share with their colleagues so they can be the smart person who knows things and passes them around. So that's a little bit of some ideas for how to reconnect with your current clients. Now, one of the things that makes people feel uncomfortable is what if they say, I don't need anything right now? Breathe. One of the things you can write this phrase down. I love this. My coach, Joan Fletcher, many years ago, gave this idea to me. She says, my business is growing and I'm looking for new projects. Wow. Who wouldn't want to talk to you, right? That's exciting. My business is growing I like that and one. I'm looking for new projects. If you were me, who would you be talking to? Who do you know who might like to have that same extraordinary experience that my team and I give you? Now, you can tell the difference between your really good clients and your truly great clients 
because the one that responds saying, oh, let me introduce you to Sarah and Joe, as opposed to, oh, I know some people, you should call Sarah and Joe. You right. see the difference? Right, sure. Wonderful. And so being able to make that easier. See, give me a name of one of your clients, just a first name. Somebody Rachel. like Rachel. So Rachel does not wake up in the morning saying, I must go and take a big bucket of cash and dump it on Eric's head. Now, Rachel should do this, should she not? Mm -hmm. Yes, but Rachel <laughs> has to learn to do that. So you have to encourage her to do that. And so instead, you want to make that a little easy for Rachel. You can start the conversation like we talked about. Gee, if you were me, who would you be talking to? And then you show Rachel a list. So, Rachel, I've been researching the people in the next office and in programs similar to yours. Here's the people I've been looking at. If you were me, where would you start? You're making it easy for her, right? Absolutely. Right. Big time. So starting with the client that you know and additional needs they have, other people that might be top of mind for them, and other people that you're asking them to take a look and offer some hints or intelligence on a list you've developed. And that's all in the first the, in the first circle. So on your sheet of paper, I want you to draw a center circle and I want you to call it current clients. Okay. I'm going to draw some here too. Although I, I have all these markers and I put them all somewhere else. So okay. draw one circle. <coughs> I have my circle. Clients. Okay. Next right. circle out. Next circle out is a group of people. They haven't paid you money, but they're contacts. Now, so many people walk away from this layer. The contacts are the people that include somebody that you made a proposal to and it wasn't successful. Do you ever call those people back, Eric? Oh, yeah. They didn't pick you. Sure. Yes. I bet you're smart enough to get a debriefing, right? Of course. Of course. And, now, I, and all, some, my people, all my people are get debriefings, right, guys? Right. Of course they do. <laughs> you're you're part of you're part of the coffee verse. Of course right. you do. You guys, you guys all get debriefings, correct? Yes. Thumbs up. Yes. 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 Hands up. We all get debriefings. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, do you I am and, and another hint, be sure to get a debriefing even when you win. For Ooh. one thing, it shows humility. For another thing, unless you ask, you don't know whether you won by a length or by a hair. What if you were the one that you won on a technicality and everybody in the room is holding their nose going, do we have to have that guy? You want to know that. No one ever submits a perfect proposal. You always want to know what could we do better? We want to be the very best vendor from start to finish who's ever worked with you. And so imagine what that says about your ability to pay attention to details, to listen, to really care about the results. And so back to the contacts layer. Contacts might not have bought something from you. Your contacts might be people who you find their information on one of the other sources of contract data. You might, they may, these might be the people who are, whose business cards that you have that you've never called them. You've never gotten back in touch with them. You met them at the conference and it was a year ago in pandemic and you're so embarrassed. You're going, I don't want to call these people. It'll be, it. you know what? They were also in the same pandemic. I promise you. They have also had their world turned upside down. When somebody calls you out of the blue, Eric, do you feel grateful or resentful? Oh, no. If in someone goes out of the blue, I... I feel grateful. I don't feel resentful. Feel special. Exactly. Yeah. So in fact, someone called me out of the blue today. And I was just telling, Marie and I were talking about that today. Someone called me out the blue. Yeah. So they're probably going to be glad to hear from you. You're shaking up the world a little bit. Who knows what might happen, what you might have for them. And of course, if you've done your job, you're coming with some catnip. Again, bring a thing. You're probably, if you're an ad company that's actively marketing, you've got maybe some new product information, maybe a link to, again, an article, a webinar, you're hosting a thing. You've got something to ask them about. And so you 
come bringing, come to the party, bringing something. And so get back in touch with those folks, even if they didn't buy from you. If you submitted a proposal, you've shown them your very best. Mm -hmm. They're going to remember you for good reasons. Even a really successful company in federal contracting uh, has maybe a 20 or 30% win rate a lot of the time. So of course, you're going to lose some. A lot of the time, the buyer wants you to stay in the game, if only you're talking to them and building the relationship. So you're going to come back and play again and again, rather than pasting your bids all over creation. And so the contacts then, they're people that you had met once, they haven't bought from you. There's all kinds of nurture to be going on in the contacts layer. Okay, right? Judy, let, let's reset just because we got some more people coming online yeah. as we talk. So let's go ahead and reset. First of all, if you're new, you're, you're welcome to the site. You just came onto our channel. Uh, let us know who you are. Let us know where you're from and your company. What is it that you do? Always, always, always use this opportunity to, again, promote yourself, promote your business. People are going to be watching this for years to come. Let us know who you are and what you do. And when someone's watching this video two years from now, they may just want to connect with you. Um, fortunately um, for us, those of us who have the privilege of being here live, take advantage of the opportunity to ask questions while you have us here. This is not always going to be available. And if you have the, the time and you're able to come on, take advantage. Make sure to give us a thumbs up leave comments, ask questions. We want this to be interactive, not a one-way streak. Is that fair, Judy? It sure is. And by okay. the way, maybe Maria can drop this link in the chat now. Sometimes some people can only stay up for a little bit of time or they can go or they go, can't you write this down? Isn't there a PowerPoint somewhere? One of the things that I do is some teaching and recorded on-demand courses through another organization called Govology. Govology has a number of my classes and one of them is called five federal lead sources you need to know. It's a fresh recording and it's going to be posted on demand, uh, available starting March 25th. And so okay. if you put the link there, anybody can go and access that and get a full detailed PowerPoint. We're getting almost the a whole hour of really what would be the Q&A part of that. And we're doing that live here, which is great. But get all the substance of five federal lead sources you need to know from the link at Govology. So thank you, Maria, for dropping that in the in the chat. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And again, like I said, um, so we're talking about five federal lead sources on your paper and pen. The first thing we're supposed to do is draw a circle. Yeah, okay, Judy, circle. let me put you big on the screen, Judy, hold on. Yeah. All right, she drew her first circle. It says client. And then the next circle outside of that is contacts. See, mm -hmm. does, does anyone else circle look like Judy's? No, nope. mine don't. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's okay. It's yours. When you write it down, that makes a big difference. So you have right. clients and then you have contacts. Right. Now, one of the things I absolutely encourage people to do is shift the question you're asking in the federal arena from, instead of asking, what can I bid? Start looking for the answer to the question, who is my buyer? And one of the easiest places to start is to use differently the source of intelligence that you can find on beta.sam.gov, soon to be just plain sam.gov. One of the biggest mistakes people make is to look at contract notices, sources sought, requests for information, and look at those things and go, what can I bid today? Mm -hmm. Stop doing that. Instead, remember that if you see one of those notices and there's less than 30 days before the bid deadline and you don't know the buyer and you don't know the budget and you don't know the incumbent and you don't know the history, your odds of winning are in the single digits. The smartest thing you can do is to extract the point of contact information from that bid notice and start there. Cause one of the other things that you and I have have on our slate of discussion is players at all the layers, mm -hmm. the point of contact that is listed in that bid notice is somewhere usually in either the contracting 
layer or the end user layer. They're mm -hmm. a starting point. So you can start to build out the full set of five layers with players at each. And so contract bid contact, yeah, bid contract contact notices are really helpful places to pull out intelligence about who's actively buying these days, the kinds of things that I offer. And so those notices are incredibly valuable. Okay. And when you start there, then that kind of pops us out to some other sources. So when your next source of intelligence tells you that a specific person is connected in some way with buying what you do, then you can really dig in and say, what else can I find out about this person? Because they clearly represent a lead. What else can we find out about who they know, who they buy from, how often they've purchased, who else works alongside them? You can start to build out the story. What do you think of that as the next layer out? Blank, what do you think? Contacts. Mm-hmm. And then mm. contract notices. Okay. Okay, so that's the next circle. Okay. So what do All you right. think about that idea? Using Let me see your circle. Let me sure. make sure we're make sure our circles are the same. All right. Hold on. There it is. Okay. All right, we're good now. Okay, I see it. Okay, good. All right, good, good, so good, here good. we are. Contract notices, that's the next one. Okay. Okay. So you think of it as organic ripples out. All right, each ripple starts to move to the next level of intelligence. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, next ripple out, then you can start to tap into federal employee directories. You don't want to start at an employee directory and go fishing. You want to go hunting. You want to be very specific about who you're tracking down and why, because now you know some things about them. And so you might have a name or a partial email address. And mm -hmm. so how often, Eric, have you gone and looked for a federal agency's employee directory? Oof. Never very, done that? I mean, um, probably less than 5%, maybe 2%. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I'm really surprised. So it, for no, me, well, so, I'm, so I'm really, when we this directory. is not a critical thing. All right. I say, how cool. I'm really glad to bring back onto your radar something that in the midst of all of the other things you're doing, that one might've kind of fallen off the side a little. So yeah, it makes yeah, me I really know. happy to bring you back a little bit of something into the spotlight. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've, I, don't, I haven't gotten a fellow directory. In well, a now, long time. Do you do business with say, or want to, or who here on the call would love to do business with the department of health and human services. Anybody, Ooh. do you know anybody in your, in your community that, you know, yes. that's really important. For um, them? Nikki probably wants to work with HHS. Okay. Leland Where are my people who want to work with HHS? HHS? Just drop it in the chat. Who wants okay. to work with health and human services? Yeah. Uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, Food and Drug Administration, National Institutes of Health. Bethan probably Where, does. Where's our HHS people? If um, HHS is one of the agencies where you want to do business, your tax dollars and mine have created the single best employee directory of any federal agency. If you have not looked up the employee directory in an agency where you want to do business, you better believe your competition has. They're in there. With any of the employee directories, there's no one place you can go. Now, in the oh. government of Canada, oddly enough, there is. They have one big central online employee directory. It's real nice. No, not here. And, and there's a lot of places that you can pay money for this subscription and that subscription, but a lot of the time it only goes down to a certain level, really senior public levels, right in the ooey gooey, really hard to do. And so every single agency, they've got a small business page and that's a good starting point, but you can go to the top level of the agency or department site and work down. Now, the amount of data and the level of detail 
really varies. Health and Human Services is one of the best. It's a lot more challenging to try to hunt around if you're looking for specific contacts in the Department of Veterans Affairs, for example. Right. A lot tougher. State Department, they got a PDF. It's not bad. It's not nothing. Um, the other one's General Services Administration kind of comes and goes, but there can be some really good employee directory information there. HHS, you're going to get, if you've got a listing, you're likely to not only get a person's name and a street or mailing address and mail stop, very important, phone number, email address, title, entire collection of wiring diagram of, a part of uh, identifiers of what section and group they're in. But in health and human services, sometimes it'll also say contractor, helpful, because then you know that person is almost dual hatted. They have a .gov email address, but they've probably got a .com with their other identity. So mm -hmm. it's something else to track down. All right. So employee directories, if you haven't looked, go look, right? So okay. employee directories are the next one. So here's our next part of our diagram. There we go. All right. Hold on. Okay. Now, employee directory. Now, when we go to the employee directory, what are we looking for? You're starting with somebody's name, maybe first name, maybe last name. One of the things that we may have talked about before is that when you do research into past federal contract records, we talked about contract notices. So I was referring to beta.sam.gov notices right. about things sure. coming up for competition. Yep. Another right. source that I could spend all day talking about, and we're not diving too deep into now, is past federal contract records okay. on the federal procurement data system or the contract data section of SAM.gov rather than the right. contract opportunities part, which right. we had been mentioning. Right. Okay. The federal government collects over 300 different fields of data every transaction that is based on a contract estimated to be worth more than $25,000. And that data goes back over 30 years. I have found stuff available for free online right now that goes back to 1988, my first years of federal contracting uh, Padawan. And so <laughs> when you look at the fields, their data fields include an entry for who created the record, okay. who applied approved the contract, mm -hmm. who modified that data record. Sometimes you'll get a full email address that's usable. Other times you'll get a partial email address or one with funny characters stuck in it. You know it ends in .mil, but there's a bunch of weird stuff in the middle. So you start to look at the patterns of the email addresses. You realize you've got to drop that stuff out. Health and Human Services, it has a great employee directory, but the created by, approved by, modified by fields will have HHS a Smith. That's it. Well, you know that it's HHS. So take that part off. A, right. you realize it's the first initial and then Smith. You can mm -hmm. go over to the employee directory, take A Smith, plug it in and see who's, which of the A Smiths in the directory are involved in buying what you do. So you're doing detective work. It's kind sure. of fun. Yeah. You feel real smart doing it, which <laughs> is why I like it. It makes me feel like an evil genius. And so um, employee directories then are your next place to start to track down some details because once you have one person, you want to find out who else works with that person in their department, in their unit, in their office, and start to build out who are all the people who have job titles that correspond to the kinds of business cards, the kind of job titles that the people who typically need what I do have. Give me some job titles, Eric of the you know, the kinds of people who buy from you, who do business with you in the federal arena? Um, for me, particularly, <laughs> we work with engineers. Mm -hmm. um, we work with program, uh, uh, you know, depends on- Good, the keep, keep throwing those titles. So engineers want direct facilities manager. Yes. That might be another one, right? Right, we work construction sure. managers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they call them project director, project mm -hmm. executive. Good, um, good. Those are all people that I work with. Right. Yeah. So I want everybody who's listening here to drop into the chat um, at least one title of a typical end user who needs what you do. Those are the kinds of titles that you start to search on in the employee directories. 
and some other places. Once, and so we we'll go out to the next layer. And that is one of my favorites. How many federal employees, let's put this in the chat, how many federal employees do you think have an active profile on LinkedIn? Oh, uh, got to guess. By the, by the way, Judy's asked this question before. Now we're going back to, I think, our first, first recording. So we're going to see how many people were paying attention to our very first recording. And again, also, um, there's 50 people watching this, 26 likes. Give us a thumbs up, please, so that we can help this content get pushed out there and shared with the world. So give us Thank a thumbs you. up if you haven't already done that. Um, Judy's question on the table is how many active federal employees are on LinkedIn? Is that correct? And in the meantime, yes, it is. And in okay. the meantime, while we're waiting for that, waiting for our, our big winner here to get the right number, I want to ask Marie if you would drop into the chat the link to our GovCon Personas Guide. You've heard all me right. talk about the players at all the layers. As you're doing your research, you heard me talk about you have one contact, you have to find the other ones. Mm -hmm. There's players at five different layers, every place you want to do business in the federal government. And this is what I call my players and layers methodology. And it's important to have that in mind because otherwise, if you don't really know what you're looking for, I love the quote that my friend Mike Oz Redker gave me when I was researching my first book. He said, you know, he said, Judy, selling to the federal government is like swimming in the ocean with no mileposts. You're in Florida, Eric. That, that's a pretty grim prospect. That's isn't pretty it? grim. If you, if you jump out in that ocean, you're in trouble. <laughs> exactly. I can well, tell you that. Yeah. And so it can be better. So the players and layers methodology, you want to make sure that you've identified at least one player at each of these, these layers. First, end user. That's the one that has the job title that you know that they need what you do. They're always using what you do or consuming what you do or influencing the specification. Uh -huh. The second one, contracting layer. That includes the contracting officer who has the power of the president of the United States does not have to legally bind your company to the government of these United States in a contract. And it also includes the contract specialist. The third layer is the small business specialist. They're often cheerful, chipper, full of information. And you might think some of it's not useful, but the more work you do before you talk to them, the more helpful they're going to be to you. Then stakeholder. This is the head of the agency. This is often the person who's the guest speaker at a big conference. They have the big fancy title. They're actually not your buyer. They're the one who gets tied to the stake and tarred and feathered if things go tango uniform, shall we say. If things go badly, they're the one who gets fired. They're the one whose job is at risk. And finally, industry, incumbent prime contractor. A lot of the time you may need to team with them. Sometimes you're going to have to get your nose under the tent and push them out. But those are your five. End user, stakeholder, contracting, small business, and industry. So set up your lead tracking, set up your lead spreadsheet so that you can see, have I got players at all the layers when I do this? So LinkedIn, then let's come back. LinkedIn is a tremendously valuable place to find. The, and we're looking at numbers of contacts. I will tell you, Brian, you're about halfway. Um, Leland has got it right. About just, uh, just over 2 million federal employees have current profiles on LinkedIn. Now, some of them are not really well filled out. But when you can see their profile, you can find out things like what other agencies they worked at. If they're in a federal civilian agency, did they also serve in the military before? Sometimes there's a hobby or school or other interest connection that you can talk with them about. It's an opening for a conversation. Sometimes you can take a look and see what other positions they've had, or you can ask them some things about other places they've lived or worked or been posted. 
And so the LinkedIn profile can help round out the picture of who is this person as a human being and give you some other ways to ask some other questions to build a relationship with them or help them and get them to help you with your detective work. And so the final one, because your tribe is a really hardworking group, I promise mm -hmm. you five federal leases, lead sources you need to know. And I'm actually going to give you a sixth one. And this one is, I think, most useful once you've already dug into the other layers. And so the final layer is actually the Googleverse itself. Okay. That's the final one because Google is like a big fishing net. Federal employees, most of them, so some of these techniques aren't going to be as effective if the place you do business, your target agencies are inside the intelligence community. But your average federal employee is active. They've got, if they're involved in the contracting layer, they've got their name on all kinds of stuff. Many of them publish papers. They make presentations at conferences. Mm. Once you've got a first name and a last name and are pretty certain about a current agency for somebody who buys what you do, then you can drop them into a, what I call a blunt force Google query. See what you get. Mm. I like that one. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. You know, it doesn't have to be hard. And all of these sources work together. You're going to make multiple passes using these six sources with the goal of filling out the players at all the layers, every place you want to do business. That's going to help you make a good bid, no bid decision because nobody can really afford to be writing novels for strangers. So Judy, let's, let's rewind. <clears throat> I saw someone just said they came on late. Let's go back. No and... worries, Mark. We've got you. <laughs> all right. Um, First of all, five federal lead sources. We drew out our diagrams. Can you show yours on the screen? I sure Judy? will. Here's our, here's our diagram. All right. There we go. So you draw a big circle, client in the middle. Then you have client contacts, contract notices, employee directories, LinkedIn, and Google. All right. And those are our lead sources. Now, and those are free. These are all free. You don't have to pay some big fancy database. Now, to be honest, you're going to spend time and you're going to spend money. All you get to choose is the mix. So sometimes spending money on a database is a good resource decision. But a lot of the time when we're getting started, we may have a little more time and a lot less money. And so making the most of the free things you have around the house makes a lot of sense. So now those are the lead sources. Now you said uh, we've got the players and layers method. So mm -hmm. you just went over the players. I did. Okay. I dropped it in the chat, but just really quickly. Let's go through it just for the people that just showed up. We're going to, as a recap. Sure. Players and layers. Um, you want me to recap the players at all the layers? I can do that. Yeah, just recap the players. Absolutely. Um, the, you need to know people at five different layers, sometimes multiples, but if you don't have people at all five of these layers and know who they are, you might not be in a really strong position to bid. So five layers include stakeholder, that's yep. the base commander, the general, the cabinet secretary, real visible, big fancy title. They are not your buyer. Okay. End user. Ooh, they're almost at the bottom of the pile. They're at the pointy end of the stick. They're the person who's answering the calls at the help desk. They're the person who's really going to be affected by how well you perform because they're relying on you every day. The quality of your product or service to support them. Okay. That's the second one. Third one, small business specialist. There are thousands of them. They're in every federal department and agency. They have inward facing responsibilities to be accountable to the agency's small business goals and commitments and outward facing responsibilities to help small businesses navigate and to advocate for them in the contracting process and lead them to opportunities. Let's see. Next one, industry. Current prime competitors, competitmates that are out there in the world. And finally, contracting. So contracting, end users, stakeholder, small business, prime. Those Got are it. your layers. Boom. Okay. And the lead sources to find them or we just went over? Lead sources that are absolutely critical. Start where you are. Somebody who's already paid you money is 12 times more likely to do that again than 
somebody who's never heard of you to buy from you. So all kinds of con juicy conversations to have with the people who are your current customers. They've bought from you. Next ripple out, contacts. You know them, you've got their contact information from somewhere, you've met them, heard of them, but they haven't actually bought something from you. Get over the embarrassment of not having called in a while or not having followed up the way that you thought. I invite you to my personal no guilt zone. Pick up the phone, call them. They'll be glad to hear a friendly voice. All right. Next level out, contract notices, contract data. That includes past contract data, as well as agency forecasts, as well as current notices about things that are coming up for bid and opening. Instead of looking at all of those things and going, what can I bid? Start asking yourself the question, who's my buyer? Who's my federal human? What, what else can I find out about that person and the people at the other four layers around them? Next layer out, once you've started to identify a good lead, you know that because of their activity and their title and their position, that they're pointing the way to an opportunity for you. And at that point, it's productive to take a look at what else you can find out about them in the agency's employee directory. Some people will go through the employee directory first and just pull out everybody with a job title. Mm. You can also waste a lot of time that way. Who likes getting spam? No one. Mm -mm. Learn about them first. I don't, I really, sometimes something will just hit me the wrong way on a day and I will just take five minutes and bang out a thing saying, why are you emailing me? You don't know anything about my business. You don't know anything about me. And I have no interest in talking to you or your company because you didn't bother to find out anything about me before you wrote to me. Now I've killed off five minutes of my life that I could have done something else with, but it really annoys me sometimes. So there you go. Um, so employee directories are the next level out. Once you've got a couple of clues that somebody's involved in buying what you do, you can find out more about the players at the other layers in their agency and their organization. Next layer out then can be LinkedIn. You can take a look at somebody's professional profile. You can also see what groups they belong to, who else they're connected with. You can make a connection request. And for the sake of Mike, do not just hit the connection button, write them a note, explain what you've observed, why you may be useful to them, what's in it for them to connect with you. Even if all they do is say connected and they never even write back to you, they lurk, they watch you. Mm. They That's watch your content. That's very true. Yep. I get that all the time. People, Yeah. I have the uh, LinkedIn uh, accelerator thing, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. I have that and I can see who watched me and I can oh, you say, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your 1200 bucks a year does do some interesting things for yes. you. You can see who's been looking at you. Right. Because data shows that your average federal buyer checks you out 12 times online before they even talk to you. And if they go to your website and they don't find what they're looking for in eight seconds or less, they're out of there. So your website matters, your online profile and your content also really matters. And so connect with your folks on LinkedIn. It's a different way to build a different facet of the relationship. After you've tried the human intelligence, talking to people that you know, following up on some of the other contacts that you've made, you've looked at contact data, you've gone into the employee directories, you've plumbed the depths of LinkedIn. At that point, it makes sense to cast the bigger net and say, what does Google tell me about this person? Because lots of federal employees, they publish, they write PowerPoints, they write papers, they go to conferences, they speak. And sometimes you'll find some personal stuff out there as well. I'm not suggesting that you go stalk somebody on social media, but big fat Google search brings all kinds of stuff into the net. And you can start. No, that's interesting. I, I like that Google search because I often say, you know what? If someone just Googled me, they'd find out a whole lot of stuff. And then, <laughs> and then when they Google, they go, oh, that's you? And say, yeah, all you do is Google the person's name. And I, I can tell you when I'm researching my podcast guests, I Google them. And does that mean you saw my personal blog? Oh, of course. I saw everything about you beforehand. But <laughs> actually, the personal blog I was doing, I started something I started doing earlier this year because I really wanted to say, what does it take? How can I kind of navigate that 
ooey gooey space between being all cheerful and buttoned up with lots of good advice. This is kind of how I show up sometimes and scare people on your, uh, on your YouTube or, Oh, big hot mess. Um, and so I decided, you know, there was only one way to find out. And so, um, you can, can, you can see a little bit of that at judybrat.blog. Um, I been, did a whole series of just sort of unbuttoning what's going on with me. What do I, what am I thinking about? What are the things I'm struggling with? And just trying to be really a little more vulnerable in a really human way. And I think, it's Julie, been though, challenging. People, li people like that. I can tell you um, whenever I'm vulnerable, people really respond to the content and the messages. So, um, mm -hmm. and that's why, again, I come out humble. I don't claim to know everything. Uh, I share the things that I've learned the things that I'm doing. Obviously, I can't teach people things that I don't know. <laughs> so I can only share my experiences and my stories and the things that, you know, I've embarked upon in my journey. And I'm very, I've made mistakes. I share those mistakes publicly. Um, and so, again, I think that that's, that's great. And people really do love it. Um, I love hearing about your story. I've been waiting for you to bring like your snorkel and your mask. You know, I, I've been waiting for that stuff to come out. I'm still looking for it. Oh my goodness. Well, I have it right across the room there, but it, the, um, you're bringing up a very good point because I'm going to be doing data diving at the end of April. Meantime, um, I, if Maria can drop something else into the chat, okay. um, in addition to being a guest on shows like yours, I also host a webinar series. And right. so anybody who wants to get on the list for those, you're welcome to. Our next one will be called Business by Association on this coming Thursday, April, sorry, March, uh, March 25th. And we're going to be talking about ways to build your business and build relationships through the choices you make and the investments of time, as well as money in the associations where you want to go play. And so nice, nice, but nice. We'll, we'll do, we'll do those as well. Those are free. Okay. And Maria, so those, Maria, those drop that, something she'll drop that do. link in the chat. Um, that would be are great. There, I saw someone had a question out there. Well, more of a statement that they said they were having a hard time. I think it was Trish. Was that you that said, I, I can't find any of those contacts on LinkedIn. And you may be able to be a little bit more successful by using some of the other choices. And sometimes if you use variations in somebody's title, that can help a little. Otherwise, sometimes going back to the contacts you have, Right. And working out from there, kind of restarting a little bit instead of um, uh, jumping in at level three or four might help a little bit for I, sure. Go ahead. No, I could say for me, what I've seen, for, like, like what Judy mentioned, uh, if you were to, for example, Trish, uh, if you were to befriend me, um, you would see contacts that were related to me that were like a second tier or third tier contacts out. So I think it helps, like Judy mentioned, even if you can't find the direct person, if you can find friends of friends uh, or people who, you know, like Judy has, I'm sure has a big uh, contact list. Uh, I'm connected. Maria. Yeah, is, if you connect with one of us, then like, you're that much step closer. Right. If you to connect with one of us, else. you get one step closer to those other folks out there. Lilani's uh, connected. So we've got some people in the room. But remember, if you well. connect with, offer a connection request, say met you on GovCon Giants or just right. like GCG. Yeah. So right. I'll know where you came from. Cause otherwise right. what's yes. in it for me? I don't right. know you. Exactly. Exactly. So definitely. Um, yeah, that's true. You've got to say where you, and I tell people all the time, especially when you're reaching out to my podcast guests, let them know where you came from. So it's just not some, like she said, a cold request because like Brian wrote, there's a lot of LinkedIn lurkers, as he says. <laughs> sure. I mean, I love LinkedIn, but I can tell you what, it's the most spammy place that I've ever been on. But I do respond to the people who let me know that they heard a podcast, they listened to me. Like you said, they heard Judy and I talk. If someone writes a message like that, then I know they took the time out to research me and know mm -hmm. about me. If they just said, hey, um, I want to help you get more roofing jobs, they don't even realize I don't even do roofing. So I know mm -hmm. that they, they didn't bother to, to learn anything about me. Mm -hmm. And then especially exactly. people that says, hey, we'll teach you how to do business with the government. And I go, okay, this guy really doesn't know anything about me. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I get, I, I, if those are the ones those. that make me just a little crazy. Yeah. And 
remember as well that the concept of players and layers, just using these free research sources is also really valuable when you're setting yourself up to prepare for, honestly, a sales conversation, a first conversation with a prospect. For goodness sake, look up their LinkedIn profile. Look up what's up with their company or their organization. Because if you don't have time to learn about your government buyer, they sure as heck do not have time to learn about you. That's fair. That's fair. No, no. Um, so, so we dropped in the chat, Judy's webinars for everyone out here listening. Oh, just- Mark has a good point. He said the plus about LinkedIn is they may change their company emails, but you can still keep in touch on LinkedIn. I'm going to say yes. And one of the big complaints that I get, and tell me if you've experienced that. I know you have Eric, you and I talked about it. What happens to the people complain, all oh, those contracting officers, they uh, move all the yes. time. And we, you know, I've talked about right, the magic of the twofer. Before. By yep. keeping in touch with people, you not only have a contact from where they were, they went somewhere else. They can often help you reconnect with the people who are now in the chair where they were. And sometimes they'll really dish about the place they left and tell you things they couldn't tell you while they were there. Right. But that also requires the discipline to know who your people are, stay in touch with them, do more than the annual plunk update of your capability statement, but have that list of people that you're just, hey, how are you doing? Just found this link. Wondering if you've gone to the Society of American Military Engineers conference this year. Just saw this report on on non-destructive testing and a company I just heard of is manufacturing rapid erection indestructible buildings that can withstand force 10 on the Richter scale. Why don't you check them out? Here's a link to their website at rapidbuilt.com. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'm telling you, man, if, if you if you're not gaining something out of these conversations, uh, turn off your TV, get off your phone and pay attention, because even I'm getting ideas as Judy's talking about things that I could be doing even further. I, I, unfortunately, I, I stopped kind of business building, doing business development just because we've been slammed and we can't manage the stuff that we do have on our table. Mm-hmm. But Nice when I problem get, to have. Congrats. <laughs> but when I get back to the, you know, hitting the ground running, I'm, you know, a lot of these things are coming in mind and I can actually uh, play out with other folks out here who I know are trying to break into some federal agencies and they're not having much success. So, sure. uh, you know, give us a well, thumbs Mark up. Mark was saying I'm a lurker. I would use it as a constructive researcher. Um, somebody who was saying I need, oh, Mr. Chill was saying I'm uh, learning more about LinkedIn, but need help. My Grand, the grand guru of LinkedIn and federal is Mark Amtower. And so do not, under any circumstances, send Mark a connection request without a note. Ooh. Not going to go anywhere. Right. Mark's group is Government Market Master. My LinkedIn re- group is Government Contracts Made Easier. There's about a thousand folks on there. And I'm always interested in people who want to post some content. So you can make a connection request and join if you'd like. And remember, we talked about five federal lead sources you need to know if you're joining late or say, hey, could you recap that? Tell us more. I have teaching a full class on that at another one of my partner hosts called Govology. And so you can go and pick up the link to that specific class. And um, and if Maria can drop the specific link for that class into uh, the chat, that would be great. You can go right there, pick up the class, and it's 90 minutes of goodness. Judy, listen, uh, Trish, I, I um, again, Judy and I mentioned this where people said that um, he said that the, the DOD agencies and primes might share a little less info on LinkedIn. I totally, totally disagree. Um, I have people that work for the largest companies in the country, the biggest primes on the planet, and they're all over. In fact, LinkedIn just sent me a notice that there's over 2,000 Boeing employees on LinkedIn. 2,000. So I totally disagree with that, Trish. I think, again, uh, what you've got to do, you just got to do it differently uh, because like she said, with 2 million people on there, there has to be some people that work at the DOD. In fact, there's people that work at the DOD that are on this YouTube live that are also on LinkedIn. I'll tell you an experience I had that just blew my mind. I was, um, I've forgotten why it ended up being, but somebody, uh, somebody named Brian Ince had, I think, sent me a connection request and he sent it to me without, I think he sent it to me without anything at all. And I thought, 
Are you related to Michelle Gardner Ince? Because I-N-C-E, that's a really unusual last name. You don't see it very often. So I wrote and I said, are you by any chance? I said, yes, I certainly am. I married up. Um, and so we correspond a little. said, Let, hey, would you, I'd love to explore whether or not we have some mutual interests. And he said right away, oh, sure, that'd be great. I went, oh, good. Oh, one thing I don't have time for. Oh, jeepers. Oh, all right, fine. And so we've, nonetheless, we found a, found a time and I sort of had sent two different Zoom links and we were chasing each other all over Zoom for five minutes. It was embarrassing. But in the meantime, I had actually looked up, all right, where exactly is, is he employed? What's he do? Is it Office of the Director of National Intelligence? Holy crap. Whew, what could I possibly have in common with him? Oh, gee, my goodness. <gasps> um, I thought, let's just breathe. Let's just breathe. <laughs> well, it turned out, he was so nice. And it turned out he was looking for, he had some specific things that he had in mind, personally and professionally. He was looking for some ideas for building his network. And I had some ideas for him. There was at least one association that I thought might be um, interested in his expertise. And we ended up having a couple of things to explore together. And I was just so excited to meet somebody who had had a distinguished career in, in the Air Force and started with aircraft maintenance. And we talked about that and we talked about airplanes and all kinds of things. And that just came because I followed up from a connection request, used a little intuition. Right. And it was, so I've launched a whole new relationship that I didn't, that wasn't even there a week ago for me. It was wonderful. No, that's great. No, I, and I, and I we have a lot of similar stories. Maria finds a lot of our podcast guests via LinkedIn. Um, in fact, I talk to some of my podcast guests on LinkedIn. Judy, you and I talk on LinkedIn. Uh, so, you know, it just, it actually, sometimes it's better than email because it gets you, you don't not going inside of your inbox. Um, and get lost and never come out. I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I connected with you because I was jealous. I was jealous because one of the, one of my top gun coaches in my program, the federal business intensive is the eight week program that I do with established companies right. who are what I call triple fives. You've got been in business for more than five years, more than 5 million in revenue, at least five people involved in the business development and sales. That's, that's what I do. Everything else is gravy and community service and connecting and being part of the tide that lifts all the boats. And as part of as just part of doing that as part of part of outreach um you know i'd love to have conversations with people about what's going on with their businesses and what's up with them if someone is qualified for our federal business intensive that program includes a special private hour with one of our top gun coaches you get to spend a private hour with a former federal acquisition professional. And one of my Top Gun coaches, Ryan Atencio, uh, he is a retired army ranger from the 75th Ranger Battalion in Georgia. And I thought, Ryan's on with Eric? How come I'm not on with Eric? One of my coaches is there and I'm not there. So who is this Eric? I have to, I have to find out about his stuff because I thought if my coach can get on there, why can't I? Right. So it really got my attention. And Ryan is just a wealth of wisdom. His particular magical skill is to be able to turn us, let a contractor communicate and, and craft a statement of work that saves a lot of time for their buyer. It makes it easy for buyers, defense department buyers to move money from one agency to another, use an existing vehicle and poof, right. award a contract. By the way, um, Chris, she's talking to you. Mandua, she's talking to you. <laughs> but she just said that applies to your two IDIQs, your contracts you have. How to move it from one agency to the next. That's what we she's call, talking about. We call about. it MIPR. That's right. You hear M -I that? M-I-P-R to MIPR the money. Look it up. So, but if you're out there and go, hey, this is all interesting. How do I apply this? Connect with me on LinkedIn. If your company is in a position to do an eight-week intensive private program, you know, that's that's what I do. And I, I remember I've been kind of wrestling with this over the last few days. How much do I want my business to grow? What do I love to do? And Eric, my hat is off to you. You invest so much in supporting a much bigger community than I do. You have what I call the, not just the financial and human and technical capital, but the temporal capital and the emotional capital. You put in the time and the heart to really bring together a big community. And I realized how much, I'm not sure I've got some of that in me, but the per particular thing I do, if I can keep doing this one thing, it's perfect for you know three to 10 people, a small 
small right. group, group in a small company. Those are the folks that really get so much about it. My clients are flying this year. I'm just so Love impressed with how Love they're it. digging in. They're doing the work. They're having friendly competitions and we can put all these, all these tools, all these ideas to work in eight weeks. Well, let's put it back together. How, how do you qualify five, five, and five? Our triple five clients, you've already got at least 5 million in revenue. You've all right, been in 5 business, million revenue. In business for five years. Business even five years. In, even if it's not in the federal arena. Doesn't matter. And you've okay. got at least five people in the company, including at least one in the C-suite who's doing federal sales and business development. All right, five years in business, 5 million revenue and five people in the company. Who are not billable. Who are not billable. Yeah. All right. Very good. So if you have that, reach out to Judy and discuss how you can get involved in her program at that level. But again, you have to qualify. Um, so if you're listening to this five months from now, six months from now, a year from now, reach out. Here. Maria just dropped in there her actual link. So you can connect. With, Judy, where should they connect with you to discuss that particular program? What do you call it, by the way? Oh, it is the Federal Business intensive. And uh, somebody who is interested in booking a call, I'll just go and drop. I've got a, a link for a 15 minute chat and um, I can share that. Um, I might be able to share that. I can probably drop that into the chat if I really have my act together here. So let me see okay. if I can find that. Um, yeah, I do, way, I do a little bit of private consulting. You're absolutely right. You can book a, a half hour consultation if you would really like to do that. So I can get the link to that if you would like. By the way, um, when Judy talked about Ryan, so Ryan, he, in fact, came on to my YouTube. He, he, he actually was the longest guest that I've ever had on YouTube. He Isn't talked he for almost three hours. Okay. Uh, Brian, you and I discussed that particular video. Uh, three hours long, we were on and it was like action packed from start to finish. He just, I mean, he dropped so much, so much information, so much knowledge. And I mean, it was hard to keep up with. It, it definitely, it's like a, it's like a whole movie. <laughs> I mean, as you can imagine, we were on, I think it was two hours and 43 minutes we were just, we were on and I had to cut him off. I mean, he was, he just kept going and kept going and kept going. So he's so passionate. It's, it's really quite wonderful. I admire him so much and everybody has gifts and his is phenomenal. It really, really is. Yes. No, Ryan, Ryan. I mean, and by the way, Ryan has, um, if you look at some of my most intensive comments on YouTube, they come from Ryan. Yep. <laughs> He stays engaged for sure. Yes, he's, he's definitely engaged. Oh, Brian says it took him a week to watch it, Judy. Yeah, three hours. That's but like well a, worth a, it. Very it juicy. It. Yep, absolutely. Yes. No, no, it's definitely juicy. And again, um, in fact, you know, Brian, this is what I was talking to you about with your IDIQ, which you could have done one of those mippers, as she said. I didn't know the name for it, but Brian talked about it on our show. And that's what we're talking about because Brian had an IDIQ. And he says it was, uh, he only had one or two task orders off of it. And so he wasn't able to make, uh, maximize the IDIQ. Very, very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. Anybody want to know a little bit more about the federal business intensive, you can go check it out there, all the things that they're involved. And Eric, you're so generous. The culture of government contracting consulting is a little bit weird because it, it's always, here you are, you must show up and empty out your head and do, do not ever dare say anything about what you do. Do not ever try to sell anything or nobody will ever talk to you again. Going, please, you're just sucking me dry. So thank you for being a wonderful partner. I love, I, I love to promote other people who are in the government contracting space on what I call my fearless Friday. Check out my LinkedIn profiles on Fridays because I promote my competitors. Who here is brave enough to go post something nice website intelligence about somebody that other people might think is your competitor. I wow. promote my competitors. That's great. Every week. That's wonderful. I want to bring gen more generosity to GovCon. You put it out there. The universe is smart, it pays attention. My partners are some of my best sources of leads and it makes us as those of us who are bringing expertise and to the government contracting community, it lets us feel like we're not all, we're, that we're, we really are all in this together right, for a special right. community who work together to serve government. 
No, I agree. No, that's that. Those are facts. Any questions before we let Judy go? You know, Judy, Judy she uh, she's not like Ryan. She, she's not going to stick around for three hours with you guys tonight. <laughs> I've got to go. You know, Judy, listen, Judy has things to do tonight. OK, she's got big plans for Monday night. So any questions? I don't see any questions out here. No, nothing for Judy. I know Judy is a, is a little lag. By the way, there's there's 60 people, 37 likes. Uh, give us a thumbs up, please, 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 please. Um, definitely give us a thumbs up and help promote the content. Again, you're receiving an hour worth of free gems, valuable information to help you grow your business, build your business, take you one step closer. If you learn, if you learned anything, one thing one tonight, thing. one thing. What do you want to do, Judy? Put a thumb up in the chat. Put a thumbs up inside you, the chat. And if you learn more than one thing, put more thumbs up. If you right, learn for, more than one for thing, for every cool thing you learned fist. tonight. <laughs> How's that? If you learn one yeah, thing, yeah, I want to see it before up. we go. Let's see. Uh, Give let's us see what our send off is. Okay. Yeah. Give us a fist bump. If you learn something tonight, let us know that you learned something. Again, Judy's got a book out. I have a couple books out. Um, so, you know, help promote, help show and some I've love. I've got a workbook as well. The workbook yeah. is new. And so it parallels, it's got lots of exercises, including things on the market research front. There you go. That's one of the parts that's particularly useful. It's got a bid, no bid checklist, and it's ways to implement the seven steps to success in federal contracting. Yeah. So um, how, how's it going? I see Julie's, Nikki's there, Jace is there, Mark B's there. Mark says the best way, Judy, if you want to show people you're an expert, the best way to do so is to teach, give away your best stuff for free. I and people will follow you and buy from you. I agree, Mark B. Uh, that's what I've been doing. Like you see, like you said, I have 400 plus videos on YouTube. So uh, I've all, I, you know, I've never had a problem of winning a client, never had a problem making a connection because yes, I literally just, just give away everything that's in my brain. So oh, yeah. Thank I you. love to do that as well. Thank you for your generosity of letting me talk a little bit about some of the things that I do and making it a little easier for somebody to say, oh, Maybe that's me. No, no, no. Listen, again, I want, hey, look, I would love for one or two people to sign up for Judy's intensive program. I would love that. Okay. I, I mean, if you qualify for your eligible, I don't see why you wouldn't jump all over it. She's, she's, again, out of all of the books that I've read in government contracting, Judy was the one I had the most notes, the most tabs, the most marked up book. That's why you've seen her on my program four times. You you have seen no other person on here as often as really? Judy. So, oh my goodness. So well, I mean, again, Ryan did five episodes of a single shot. So yeah, right. <laughs> okay, right. Ryan did five episodes in one take. <laughs> well, if you want to know whether or not you find out if you qualify for the federal business intensive, you can log on to that and make an application for the program. And there there's a couple of quick questions. We can see whether or not the situation you're in is a good fit. If not, I have other partners. If you have already checked out, drawn on Eric's resources, and you're thinking what else might complement some of the things that I've been working on, if I'm not a fit, I will for sure take a look at my Fearless Friday partners and make some introductions for you. I love go. to do no, it. No, listen, Judy. Maria, thank you for your great support yes, all as always. night. That thank made you, a Maria. huge difference. Everyone loves Maria, the baby goat. So thank you, Maria. You're always there, always right when we need you to help out. What's the baby goat? Oh, they call her. So Maria, goat, you know, is greatest of all time. Oh, greatest of all right? time, right? Right. So, oh, see. so, you're, so they the, call her, you're the greatest of all time. They, and she's well, they, some people protege? call me the goat. So they call Maria the baby goat. <laughs> oh, no. My, my sister actually has a 38-acre hobby farm in Southern Ontario. She uh -huh. has goats. She actually oh, no, has goats. Yeah, we're not she has goat. goat. <laughs> they, they do goat yoga. They have Maria, Maria would like to visit that farm. She, she's, she likes she? animals. And yeah, she might want to visit the farm. <laughs> Well, if you're going up to Canada when things open up, I am sure that Woolly Wonderland Farm would love to have you make an appointment. There you go, Maria. What part of Canada is it in? Uh, Southern Ontario. So it's a place uh, about 90 minutes northeast of Toronto called uh, Peterborough, Lakehurst. I'm sure we have people that are up there in Canada. Really? Well, yeah. if you do, then you can check out uh, Critter Visits, crittervisits.ca. I want to promote my sister's business because she is awesome. Oh, critter really? Visits, crit, yeah, crittervisits.ca. They have 
chickens and ducks and geese, and they bring little critters around to senior citizens and to schools as part of educational programs. People, families can bring home a couple of ducklings and hatch them and sort of and foster ducklings after they're just newly hatched. She really? does all kinds of very cool things. And she's actually doing a series of frozen it's still icy up there, but they're finishing their frozen visits now. They have uh, a, a, a unicorn uh, that brings a little pony uh, pony trap around, all kinds of things. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Thanks, is it Maria. Her? Yeah, that's her. Look at that. She is awesome. If you're in I'm Canada, telling you. share the word. It makes me so happy to tell spread the word about my sister, Karen Woolley. Oh, and my goodness. Her amazing you have, business. You should have shown it sooner. I should I'm telling have. You, to be honest with you, people really do like um, other experiences, right? I mean, again, they're here for GovCon, um, but at the same time, we're all, like you said, we're humans, right? So we have other experiences to draw from other things. I'll have that to have. bring my scuba goggles and, uh, and and my snorkel next time. I'll bring the fun stuff, Eric, I promise. All right, please, please. Okay. Well, in the meantime- I'll I'm going to twist your arm next okay, time. But in the meantime, the second, here we are. We're going to grant a wish. Okay. All right, Grant. One wish for the federal contract of your dreams. I, I, I. May all your wishes come true. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, all right. Hey, listen, thank you guys so much. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Look forward to seeing you next week. Um, I was out for a week. And then I left on a Monday. So I missed the last two Mondays. So we're, we're going to get back on track, get back on schedule uh, for the next four Mondays. We have guests. So we have guests back to back to back. So, so check us out, visit us online. If you are not already signed up on our email list, make sure you're on our email list so that you do not miss out on any of our live sessions. Judy, parting words. Go forth have conversations, connect, there you find go. your people, find your people. Thanks Judy, right. as always. 